And say what you want about me You can call me whatever I don't even care This morning uh, I was reading through the comments Of our post game thoughts video Yesterday And I was crying man Y'all y'all got me crying uh, Early in the morning Cause I was just reading through the comments And it was just so much uh, Just a crazy level of support man And it was real And, and it, I just appreciated it a lot it, it, it started today off Just in such a positive way uh, for me, and I just really got to let y'all know, I appreciate y'all, and I really love y'all, so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for how y'all are, thank you for how you've been, and thank you for how y'all continue to be uh, with supporting the channel, because it means a lot, man, y'all comments meant everything, man, they meant literally everything, so I appreciate y'all a lot, so thank you. Now, somebody else uh, who I'm sure is very, very grateful uh, just for how things have been going thus far this season is Rashad Bateman. Now, going into this season, this offseason, the talk uh, with Rashad Bateman, first it was if he was even going to be a Baltimore Raven uh, this year, but then the Baltimore Ravens, they gave him the contract extension, a very modest contract extension, but the new talk was how is his rapport and chemistry going to be with Lamar Jackson? Because as we know, Recently, before this year, last season, it just was not there. They did not have that connection like that. Rashad Bateman was a very receiver who is who, very precise with everything. He's a very timely, on-time receiver. We know with Lamar Jackson, he can do all the on-time stuff, but a lot of times stuff will break down and Lamar Jackson got to create. And that was not Rashad Bateman's forte as a wide receiver with the Baltimore Ravens. So we just felt like there was a disconnect. And we saw that there was a disconnect. It happened on plenty of plays. There would be some plays where Lamar thought Rashad Bateman was going one way, but he was going the other way. He thought Rashad Bateman was going to jump for that, but Rashad Bateman, it, it, it was just a big mix-up all the time. So a lot of us were concerned uh, heading into this season. All right, Rashad Bateman is going to be around. How is he going to be? Uh, and then there was a concern, hey, why isn't Rashad Bateman with Lamar Jackson and down there in South Florida working out with the receivers and stuff? Even Lamar Jackson, he sort of hinted at, like, it's almost like he took a little subtle shot at Rashad Bateman. Like, oh, yeah, yeah I'm trying to get these guys down to Florida, but Rashad Bateman didn't go for whatever reason. But we did talk about how they had training camp to build that rapport and build that chemistry up. And I remember when we would look at the reports from training camp, every single time we saw a report about Lamar Jackson connecting with Rashad Bateman, we got excited. We were like, yes, it's happening. But we didn't see those reports too much. So they would come far and few. But then the season rolled around. And the beginning of the season started – and he started off a little slow in the Chiefs game. Rashad Bateman didn't have that huge catch at the end of the game uh, that got the Ravens into position to get what could have been a game-tying touchdown and point after touchdown. But he really didn't do too much in that game. Uh, and then the Raiders game happened where Rashad Bateman had a couple of catches, but then he had that drop. And that drop led to Lamar Jackson's interception. I said, oh, man. But... When you look at how this season's been going for Rashad Bateman after that, he has been a lot more involved and consistently involved. And this could be huge for the Baltimore Ravens. It could be huge for Rashad Bateman because this can really – because I know this offseason too, something that we've talked about a lot. With Rashad Bateman, I was so tired of having to use the word potential. I was so tired of saying that. Because that's what it had been with Rashad Bateman. Yeah, we know the potential is there, but will the Ravens bring it out of him? Hey, who knows? We'll see. But we're starting to really see that potential come out of Rashad Bateman a lot more. Why? Because he's been getting a lot more opportunity. And him and Lamar, like their connection and their report, that chemistry, it keeps on going up. So think, we, we just finished with uh, week six. Ravens sitting at four and two right now. And their chemistry is where it is right now. Like even this last game against the Commanders, Rashad Bateman had four catches. How many targets did he have those four catches on? Four. Every single time Lamar Jackson targeted Rashad Bateman, it was a catch. And that's a beautiful thing to see. I, I've been loving Rashad Bateman's involvement with this offense. And you, you think about... 
how with the Ravens offense, obviously they are run first offense, they are run heavy offense. So being a receiver in this offense, it could be tough at times. Because there's going to be some games where you're just chilling. You're a blocker, you're an extra offensive lineman, you ain't really doing too much at the wide receiver position. But you got to stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Rashad Bateman's been ready. He's been ready. And looking at his numbers uh, this year, thus far, um, he has 17 catches for 273 yards, uh, and he has two touchdowns. So you look at those numbers, you're like, okay, that's cool, but what's significant about those? Well, you compare those numbers to his other seasons. His rookie season, he had 46 catches for 515 yards. He's already more than halfway uh, to the numbers that he got his rookie season. He's already more than halfway there in just six games. So that says a lot. And then 2022, uh, he had 15 catches for 285 yards. Oh, he, he's about to pass that next game. He's about to pass what he got the entire 2022 season. He's getting ready to pass that probably in seven games. So then you look at 2023. Last year, he had 32 catches for 367 yards. Hey, he mess around and have a big enough game next week. He could obliterate that. So Rashad Bateman in this this year is getting off to a tremendous start for him. And yet the, the numbers are not super sexy. The numbers are not like eye popping or anything like that. But still, when we seeing what Rashad Bateman's been doing with this offense, how he's been performing with the these Baltimore Ravens this season. It, it, it's a beautiful thing, and it can go such a long way. Lamar Jackson talked about with the offense. Pick your poison. Pick your poison. John Harbaugh talked about with the offense weeks ago when he was trolling. This, the, the, the same uh, sentences where he was talking about, whoa, with Derrick Henry, we didn't bring him in to get no 25, 30 carries a game. A lot of Ravens fans got upset about that. But that same thing, he said, hey, pick your poison. He said, we got so many different ways that we can get it. And he talked about it, too. He said, there's going to be some games where this player's going off. This player's getting a bunch of numbers. This player's getting a bunch of catches, carries, whatever. But then this player over here, you wonder, like, oh, why doesn't he have many catches? Why doesn't he have many carries? But that's because the Baltimore Ravens offense is evolving. Baltimore Ravens offense is growing. But specifically with Rashad Bateman, he's evolving. And he's growing. Going into this year, I was skeptical. About this whole situation at wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens. Um, because I was just very worried. Like with Zay Flowers, especially how he did last year. It's like him and Lamar got a connection. I ain't worried about Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers was really good last year. He's going to continue that this year. And he has. But with Rashad Bateman, I was concerned there. Because I'm like, hmm. Rashad Bateman, if he's going to also be our wide receiver. Who else are we going to get? Are we going to draft somebody early? Are we going to trade for somebody? Are we going to sign some? What, what else are we going to do? At wide receiver, because I know the Baltimore Ravens, they're not about to really roll with Rashad Bateman as one of their top receivers, right? Not, not after these past three years, and they did, and I was like, oh, okay, all right. Now, they got to have a move on the way. They got to be bringing somebody in. Nope. Ravens said, no, 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 we're not, we not bringing nobody in, and I was very skeptical because I continue to say all offseason, they, they cannot put all their eggs into the Rashad Bateman basket. You just simply can't. It's, it's too risky. It's too, too much of risky business. You can't do that. And Ravens been doing a lot of risky business uh, this season, especially with the offensive line. Remember how that started? Ooh, ooh yeah, that. Yikes. But anyway, they, they have definitely turned the corner in a big way. So shout out to the offensive line. But Rashad Bateman has two. Last year um, with Rashad Bateman, he was kind of just floating along uh, because the Baltimore Ravens, obviously Mark Andrews, um, but then when he got hurt, Isaiah Likely, there was Zay Flowers. They also had Odell Beckham Jr. They had Nelson Aguilar. So Rashad Bateman, he was just trying to find where he fit in to the offense because there was a lot of guys that were ahead of him on the pecking order. And it seemed like sometimes where he would be out there, it seemed like Lamar wouldn't even look his way sometimes. But this year, it's been different. This year, it's almost like the Baltimore Ravens, they were like, look, Lamar, we know how you always Zay Flowers. We know how you all Mark Andrews. Know how you always Isaiah Likely. You ain't like that with, with Rashad Bateman. So it's almost like they forced Lamar Jackson to be like, Rashad Bateman is going to be one of your top options, so get used to it, buddy. I think that's probably what they told him. And Lamar's like, okay, cool. Let's get it. But um, because you see with Rashad Bateman being out there, being one of the Baltimore Ravens' two top receivers, Lamar ain't got no choice 
but to get the ball to him. But we like that because we see, especially in recent weeks, it's been working. And it's been helping Lamar Jackson continue to get even better. It's been helping Rashad Bateman continue to get even better. And obviously there's been a conversation too about the Baltimore Ravens possibly trading for a wide receiver. And I, and I don't think that conversation that's not necessarily going to go anywhere. Uh, and the reason I say that, that it's not going anywhere because, I mean, why not? Uh, I feel like, look, look, the Baltimore Ravens for so many years, especially under Lamar Jackson too, uh, but for the Baltimore Ravens for so many years, they go defense heavy. They invest like crazy in the defense. They always trade them for a defensive player. They always add, add in quality defensive players. That's cool, but let's go all in with the offense, man. Let's let's like really go. I would love if they did that, but if for some strange reason they don't, and it wouldn't really be strange, you know, Baltimore Ravens. But they're they're building with what they have, and I love that we're getting positive results, especially from Rashad Bateman. Now back to that previous conversation about them possibly adding another wide receiver, which I don't know, man. I don't expect them to, but hey, you never know with the Baltimore Ravens. You just never know. But you think about what another elite player could do for this offense. Not just for this team, but for this offense. Really for the team as a whole. Because you see, for years, we've seen Lamar Jackson. Oh, man, he's so amazing. He's great. He does this. He does that. Crazy, crazy good quarterback. But then the Baltimore Ravens are like, look, we are... The number one rushing team. The Ravens have been one of the top rushing teams in the league for a long time now. A lot of that has been because of Lamar Jackson, but they've always been a team that they love running that football. But when Lamar Jackson got here, oh, it went crazy because the threat of Lamar Jackson, anybody who lined up next to him, it just makes their life and their job so much easier. But um, the Baltimore Ravens were like, all right, we are a really, really good running team, great running team. But this offseason, they weren't like, you know what? We're such a great running team. We're not going to add an elite running back to the room. No, we don't need Derrick Henry. Let's just stick with what we got. Let's just keep it set. No, they added Derrick Henry. So they took a strength. They took a strength. And they made it even stronger by adding an elite player at the position. You could still do the same thing at wide receiver because the passing game is also a strength too. Again, it's a pick your poison type of offense. Ravens can get it in so many different ways. So it would not hurt to add a, a significant wide receiver. Don't just go, oh, anyway. But it wouldn't have it wouldn't hurt to add a, a significant wide receiver. But anyway, this ain't about that. This is about our guy Rashad Bateman. Um, just really doing his thing. Um, and we're proud of him. We 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 just very, very proud of him and glad that we starting to really see that potential uh be banked on this time. And just sticking with Rashad Bateman in a conversation that's had amongst Ravens fans a lot uh, when it comes to a true number one wide receiver. A lot of Ravens fans will question if the Baltimore Ravens even had a number one wide receiver. Sometimes people joke, say, oh, Ravens just got a bunch of twos and threes. And then, hey, depending on what you think a number one wide receiver is, your answer could be yes or your answer could be no. But what did Rashad Bateman have to say about the Baltimore Ravens having a number one wide out. Well, uh, this quote was taken from uh, Gianna underscore Jade, uh, who covers the Baltimore Ravens. She said, a very humble quote about Zay Flowers from Rashad Bateman after he had his own best game. This is what Rashad Bateman said. He said, everybody knows Zay is our wide receiver one. That, that takes a lot, man. That, that alone... We could have stopped it right there, and that takes so much humility based off of that quote alone. But let's continue. Said, uh, everybody knows Zay is our wide receiver one, so it's good to see him put up numbers and feel like he's wide receiver one. He's up there with other guys in the category, so it's good to see him have those games. You know how humble you got to be to admit something like that? And think about this, too. Rashad Bateman, he was drafted in what, 2021? And he was not, and then there's no offense to anybody that is, but he was not a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh round pick. He was not an undrafted rookie free agent. No. Rashad Bateman was a first round draft pick of the Baltimore Ravens. So it ain't like he was a first round draft pick of another team and the Ravens traded for No, no, no. This same team, the same team, same GM, same quarterback, same head coach. Not the same offensive coordinator. But anyway, the same team. 
They were the ones that drafted Rashad Bateman in the first round. If you're a wide receiver, they draft you in the first round, what's expected of you? That you are going to be wide receiver one. So he was drafted back years ago. But guess what? Guess who really took over as wide receiver one for the Ravens? Even last year, I say, Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers is in his second year. Rashad Bateman is in what, his fourth year? The 2021, 22, 23, yeah. Rashad Bateman's in his fourth year. Both first round draft picks, both, both play wide receiver, but he has said, he's came out and admitted, like, hey, no, this is it's Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers is wide receiver one for us. That takes a lot. But that also shows a lot of maturity um, on Rashad Bateman's front. So, again, huge shout out to Rashad Bateman. We hope that he continues to do what he's been doing. It's really been, been so nice to see him and Lamar Jackson's connection and just the support. That's been another thing. And it this goes far beyond just Rashad Bateman, but just the support of the Baltimore Ravens, specifically on offense that they have for each other. Because as we know, like Derrick, Derrick Henry, <laughs> we've been seeing in that. He's been getting his every game. Every game, Derrick Henry is heavily involved as he needs to be and as he should be. So thank you, Ravens, for recognizing that and really taking care of that. So that's been great. But with Derrick Henry being so heavily involved, sometimes the receivers might, like we talked about earlier, they may not be as heavily involved as they would like to. But it's been a lot of support. You don't see them pouting on the sideline. You don't see them angry. You don't see them upset in, in post game stuff and post game interviews and all that. Saying, "Oh man, I wish I would have had my targets." Like, and I get it. It's, it's different when you're losing too. Cause I know, like Calvin, really, he he was going off about the Titans and about his targets and stuff yesterday. Ooh boy! But with the Ravens, they've been support. Like, look at Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews, he was silent. Some people even forgot Mark Andrews was on the team for a while. But then when he was asked about, it, he said, I, "I'm gonna be patient. My time." My time will come. And his time certainly, certainly came. It certainly did. So, again, it's, 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 and it's nice to look at it and really think about it and really appreciate it. Like Ravens, they do have a good amount of weapons on the team. You still got Keaton Mitchell, who could be on the way back soon enough. I know John Harbaugh made a comment about him. Even though he said Keaton Mitchell ain't ready yet. He said, we're still waiting. But he said, that he said everything's still positive. Uh, but it, it's just nice that Rashad Bateman um, and just really the whole Baltimore Ravens on offense, they're so supportive of each other because for an offense like this, there are going to be some games where you're just quiet. you got a quiet game. But in order to be a good teammate, you, you got to continue to show that love and support for your other guys who, who are going off when you may not be. So in other news, John Harbaugh had his Monday press conference. He spoke about Arthur Millette, and he said that he is hopeful uh, that Arthur Millette practices this week and possibly plays. They said it all just depends on how he practices if he ends up playing uh, this upcoming Monday night against the Bucks. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, and as far as Keaton Mitchell said, nothing new. Um, he said they, they are still very uh, positive uh, and optimistic with everything going on with Keith Mitchell, but he did not give us any definitive dates, anything like that. He did not talk about him practicing this week or anything like that. So, but he, he said everything's still on time. Everything's still on schedule with Keith Mitchell. So it's just, we'll see. But you know what? What, what was interesting is that a lot of Ravens fans actually last year, uh, when Keith Mitchell did go down with that injury, a lot of Ravens fans predicted he would be back like in November, December. So... The way that this thing is lining up, it's, it's looking like like that's going to be uh, around the time when Keaton Mitchell does come back. And that's going to be really interesting. I know we're obviously not there yet, so we don't have to think about it. But something to think about, how exactly will the Baltimore Ravens implement Keaton Mitchell into the lineup? Because think about it, like Derrick Henry obviously been doing his thing. Justice Hill obviously been doing his thing. But then you get Keaton Mitchell back. How do you deploy him into the offense? Well, I mean, we know what he can do. We know what Keith Mitchell is capable of. Uh, so, oh, man, I, I just love, I, I love, 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 love that this is such a good problem to have. Like, to where you, you have so many good players at a position that you got to figure out how you're going to implement them in the game plan. Now we've reached my favorite part of these videos where we get to hear from you all. If you want your question featured in a video, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com 
or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can just send your question directly on Patreon. This next question came from Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy Isaiah. He said, Ain't Graven, hope you and your family are doing great. Oh, we're doing amazing. I hope you and your family are doing even better, Isaiah. He said, I just wanted your thoughts on the Ravens going after Max Crosby. Oh, you t- <laughs> hey, Max Crosby will be nice because I'll pass rush, man. I've been speaking so highly of the pass rush and whatnot. And, and they did get, what, three sacks yesterday. But the pass rush, they... He's been lagging a little bit. He's been lagging a little bit. We, 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 we need a, a, a boost there. We need a big boost there. I don't know what's been happening with, a, with David Ajabo, too. He's been like, I ain't even been seeing him. And then with Adolphe Away. Adolphe Away started off the season strong. He started off the season hot. And then it's like, he just got missing. Then with Super Duper Kyle 2.0, Kyle Vanoy, he has his moments. He has his moments, but I mean, it ain't been like them first three games. Well, he got sacks, two, two sacks, two sacks, two sacks after the Chiefs game. But. Anyway, um, yeah, pass rush, they could definitely use a nice little boost. And they can go to the active roster. Ravens, just go ahead and get it over with before somebody snatch him up. Because you know what? It was funny. Yannick Ngakwe said that um, he said that he was watching the Ravens play the Chiefs. And he said, man, I, I wanted to be out there. I wanted to be with y'all boys. But, hey, now you are. So, you know what? I'm going to envision. I'm going to say, man, I want $4.5 million. I want $4.5 million. And, and maybe, hey, maybe it'll happen for me. So, anyway. Back to his question. He said, um, I know a lot of fans want a true wide receiver, as do I, but I think right now we need to improve on the pass rush. I'm not going to lie. Going after a Devontae Adams or a Cortland Sutton would be awesome. I think the Ravens should go more of a Max Crosby or even Hassan Reddick. Oh, that's funny, Hassan Reddick. He just got new representation. Uh, so he just hired Drew Rosenhaus, who is the probably the biggest agent in the game. Uh, and if not the, then definitely top two. But I don't think he's two. Um, so, he, yeah, he got the biggest in the game. So, he is going to uh, – th- there was talk that Hassan Reddick, that the Jets tried to um, restructure his contract to, give, to, to allow him to make more money for all the time that he missed and, and make up all them late fees and whatnot. Well, not late fees, but the, the fees that he got and fines. Um, but that, that broke down. Uh, so we'll see what happens with Hassan Reddick. He can still get traded. He can still get moved. But would somebody really want to touch him? Be like, uh, we know he could play. But would they really – like if, if you could trade him for like a low, low draft pick, so it would be low, like low risk. Then I can see it being done, but nothing higher than I don't think Hassan Red. If he gets traded, I don't think he would get traded for anything higher than a fourth. I really don't. Anyway, back to his question. He said, uh, "Let me know y'all's thoughts. Thanks for giving us a platform for us to share our thoughts and ideas as fans. Go Ravens, man! Uh, thank you, thank you for sharing your thoughts and ideas. Um, because, like I said, I always say this is my favorite part of the videos. Because." I mean, I, I enjoy both parts. Like when we talk about the news at the beginning of the video, then we get to the questions uh, in the second half of the video. But I love it because y'all always bring out something new that I wasn't thinking about. So I appreciate y'all. And, and that's exactly what this is for, uh, for y'all to have your questions. Like you said, everything you said. So thank you. Um, Max Crosby. Uh, Ravens, I don't think they'll be willing to give everything that it would take in order to get a Max Crosby. Um, there was a report that literally came out today from Adam Schefter. He said that the Raiders, they don't want to trade Max Crosby and they don't want to listen to anything, even if it'd be multiple first round picks. Now, that could be somebody from the Raiders like telling Schefter, hey, put it out there that we don't even want multiple first round picks. So, pe- so somebody could maybe try to trade us even more for Max Crosby so they could try to up the offer that they have been or could possibly receive for Max Crosby. But Ravens, they wouldn't be they wouldn't bite on that. Uh, well, you know what? Actually, he's a defensive player, so maybe they will. But no, nah, multiple first round pick. You know, the one thing that they love more than their defensive players is their draft pick. So, yeah, I, I don't think they will go for him. Next question came from another team, Keep It Clean patron, my guy Devin. He said, Correct me if I'm wrong, but all of Lamar Jackson's interceptions this year haven't been his fault, right? Yeah. There was one to Rashad Bateman in the Raiders game. Rashad Bateman dropped this, Spillane picked it off. Uh, then there was the one yesterday in the Commanders game where Mark Andrews dropped it in number zero for Washington Commanders. He picked it off. Uh, he said, number two, do you think Andrews needed this game to get back on track? Well, I mean, he started getting back on track in the last game against the Bengals. But n- not that he necessarily needed this game to get back on track, but he just needed to keep being out there. That's it. Keep getting his opportunities. And the, the thing about it is that, that I love. Yeah, Mark Andrews has been quiet, but it ain't like the tight end room has just been silent, even though Mark Andrews has been quiet. No, Isaiah Likely, of, of course, he's been doing his thing, but Charlie Cole has been contributing a lot, too. So 
even though Mark Andrews been quiet, the tight end room has still been loud because they've been making plays throughout. Next question came from my guy Martin, who is also a Team Keep It Clean patron. He said, I really love to see Bateman and Lamar getting better with their connections every week. It's nice that Lamar can trust Bateman more now. Yes, that part right there. I forgot to add that at the beginning of the video. That's a good point. He does. And again, they... The opportunities have been there like, but anyway, continue. He said, although I'm not a huge fan of trading for a wide receiver at the current moment because I love the chemistry we got going with Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, and Nelson Aguilar, I'm not fully against the idea, though, and a couple of trade options in my mind would be. Now, for me, like, why not? Why not upgrade? Think about this, and shout out to Nelson Aguilar, too, but if the Raiders were to trade for a wide receiver, like, why not make the room that much better? That much better. Like, you got to say Flowers, you got to Rashad Bateman, and you add somebody that would be better than those two and and still have to, ooh, that could be filthy. And, again, that's what I said. I want Ravens to go all in on offense. Do it for Lamar. Do it for yourself, too. But, anyway, he said, I'm not fully against the idea, though, and a couple of trade options in my mind would be Corlin Sutton, Devontae Adams, Tyler Lockett. Mm, that would be an interesting one. Um, I'd definitely rather the first two, though. And he said, Amari, and he also said Amari Cooper, uh, and he said, still my guy Noah Brown for the Commanders. He was the number eighty-five. That was him. Oh, I did not know that was him. I didn't realize that he was balling. That man was catching everything. He, I did not know that that was Noah. Br I did not realize that he was balling, man. That boy could play. Um, as far as Tyler Lockett, I would say no to that one. Speed, he could catch, he could play, make all that good stuff. But I, right now, where the Ravens are, and I would rather, like, and I know it sounds so, like, not general. It sounds so cliche almost, but I would rather a big body wide receiver, um, one that will have more size, more um, of a catch radius for Lamar Jackson. Um, because obviously he could throw every type of ball, but giving him somebody that he could really throw the jump ball to. Because I don't, we don't really have that in a receiver right now. So that, that's the type of receiver that I would want the Baltimore Ravens to get if they even got one. Uh, yeah, well, as far as Amari Cooper, Browns ain't trading him into the division. Uh, but anyway, um, he said, uh, yeah, he said number 85, Noah Brown, that's who Nate Wiggins was holding on his whole route. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was a good call, too. That was definitely pass interference. Nate Wiggins was all over him. Uh, he said, but I actually like Corlin Sutton as more of a trade option than Devontae Adams. Okay, cool. He said, also, I've been watching Seahawks games this year, and I got to say, Tyler Lockett, Tyler Lockett can still play. I know you would prefer DK Metcalf, but don't sleep on Tyler Lockett. See, hey, you know me, man. You know me. That, that's all your family, man. That's all your family. You, you, you already know what I'm thinking before I even say it. You already know, man. So a lot of love for my guy, Martin. He also said, my guy, Kyle Vinoy, is going to break the sack record and be defensive player of the year. <laughs> so we just, we, I guess we all, this episode, we're just talking about things that we want to happen. And see if they end up having it again. Yannick Ngakwe said he was watching the Chiefs game. And he said he wanted to be out there with the Ravens. And boom, look at that. A couple weeks later, he's back. I said, hey, I, I want four and a half million dollars. So hopefully it ends up working out for me. And now you're saying you want, Kyle Vanoy is going to break the sack record and win defensive player of the year. <laughs> okay, man. Hey, I, will, I wouldn't be mad. We, none of us would be mad. But let's see. He said, if you were to move Yannick to the active roster, you would have to move someone down. Who would that be? Mm. Ooh, good question. Um, well, Rasheen Ali just got back. He literally just got back. Um, but he doesn't really have a place. Uh, whether it was him. Whew, Rasheen Ali. Oh, Salah. Uh, the backup offensive. Yeah, probably Salah then. Yeah, for now. Um, and he said, same goes for wide receiver. If you trade for a guy, then who on the roster are you moving to fit the 53-man roster? Now, for that, if you trade for a wide receiver, um, I would just say start from the bottom of the depth chart of wide receiver. If you trade for one, bring in one, then you start from the bottom of the depth chart. Uh, it could be Deontay Hardy. It could, yeah, probably Deontay Hardy. Uh, it could be Tylen Wallace. It could even be Nelson Aguilar. So... Yeah, just all depends. Um, and he said, last thing I wanted to say is I hope the Ravens don't go away uh, for, from getting Charlie Kohler involved. I know we got Andrews and likely, but Charlie Kohler has been showing he can play too. We all agree with you, Martin. 